Over the past six weeks, we have been following a training plan, but not any old training plan. Oh no. Yeah, we've been doing the Wahoo Suf training transition plans. And these plans differ from pretty much every other plan out there in that they're designed to be the ultimate off season plan. We're nearing the end of the plan and we thought we'd go through our final session with you and chat through how the plans have been going for us. Let's do it. get started let us take you through these transition plans that we have been doing you may have seen on the GCN show that we've been doing weekly updates on how it's been going oh and nearly forgot if you'd like to try the transition plan yourself what well, you can do it's completely free and no obligation simply download the Subfest app on your phone or your laptop and then put in the code transition 30 and uh, yeah give it a go I have been following the transition down plan, the lower volume of the two plans. And I've been doing the transition up plan, and both plans have involved a mixture of interval workouts on the bike, and also yoga sessions and strength sessions that you can just do in the comfort of your own home. And the idea is that they get you ready for, well, the season ahead, and what, 2021, when we're hopefully gonna be catching up on lots of missed races and events that we haven't had this year. Getting ready for a big year. And it was around four hours a week, so it's quality, not quantity. And the aims of the plans weren't necessarily to get fitter, but get ready for our next phase of training. As some of you may know, I had to isolate for two weeks, two whole weeks, 14 days, couldn't leave my house uh, whilst I was doing this plans. So this plan really was a lifesaver for me in that two weeks. It gave me some structure to my day, gave me some motivation. And it, I feel like if I didn't have that plan, I probably wouldn't have exercised at all because I just wanted to sulk because I couldn't leave the house. What's, uh, what's your favorite session's been? My favorite session, the pedaling technique one. Mm. I haven't done anything like that in I don't think I've ever done anything like that. I feel like that's something that a lot of people forget about is the way you pedal. You just kind of get on the bike and it's all about power. But that session was really about focusing on your hand position, your shoulders, your core, your heels, went through everything. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things that, that can help people improve that people often forget is variety and doing things that you don't just do. It's easy to, to get stuck in a rut and do the same things over and over again but you do improve by mixing it up. And for me as well, yeah, doing low cadence work well, and the was, sort of pedaling technique things as well. I find myself now, even when I'm going out um, on my bike on a, on a normal ride, I'm, I'm thinking about it and trying to be smoother and pedaling in circles more and getting it good. Little rectangles. Yeah, yeah, mm. and uh, definitely it's helped. What about the yoga? Can you touch your toes yet? I can actually, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I really like the yoga sessions. Uh, Yoga's been something I have avoided. I've always been told I need to stretch more, be more flexible, and I've kind of just not done it. But these plans, it was only like 15 minutes a day, which is nothing, and doing them every day, it's really helped. Yeah, I really enjoyed them as well. I feel my core's improved. Are you stronger? Have you got bicep yes, muscles now? Yes, yeah. biceps. Yeah, there they are. Not, but that's not the point. The point wasn't to build massive biceps because, you know, it's that's cycling functional strength exercises. So it's things that are going to improve you on the bike. But at the same time, the strength work that you do in this plan isn't designed to just turn you into Arnold Schwarzenegger. It is about learning foundational movements and getting correct technique and not overloading you so that then you can move into the next phase of training, like mm. we mentioned before, and then start doing more serious weights and you know more you know heavy heavier loads and then start really building from there but it is that sort of just setting the foundation it's we're saying that this plan wasn't a walk in the park though especially my transition down plan i thought it might be you know nice gentle plan but my heart rate was hitting some high numbers yeah some of those yeah well i think we should on. i think we should see where we got to and do the, is it the time? fitness tests yeah it's time so I'm going to be doing the half Monty fitness test. Now this is the same test as I did at the start of the plan and it's basically two parts to it. There's a ramp test and then a 20 minute steady state effort where I have to keep the same pace for the whole 20 minutes. Now this is a really good fitness test if it's going to be one of your first fitness tests or if you're halfway through a plan and you don't want the test to take too much out of you because some tests can be really savage. So I've got a few minutes now before I start the ramp. Wish me luck.
I'm glad that's over. That was pretty savage. Um, I think my numbers were around about the same, but we'll find out in a minute. Ollie, you're up. cooling down now that was absolutely horrendous I feel like I'm gonna puke but uh, I'm just getting the results up and well I can see my neuromuscular performance is actually improved slightly I'm a bit less <coughs> I'm a bit less crap at sprinting than when I started <laughs> which is good but my other numbers have declined a bit, but they've only declined a bit, I mean, you know, only slightly. Um, and I mean, the great thing here is that I've, you know, this this de this whole plan hasn't been about getting me into the best shape of my life. And uh, what I, yeah, what I'm delighted about is I've done a good job of kind of improving in some areas and maintaining my fitness in the others without doing a huge amount of volume you know it's been very efficient and you know this is the key I think you know combined with my, what my weight is right now um, th this is without doubt the best numbers that I've done you know in December um, in, <laughs> in my life really I'm going into next year in the best shape I've been in so it should be a great platform normally I just sort of hit December and hit the mince pies hard and the tins of chocolates and uh kind of drop off the wagon but uh, <laughs> yeah I'm feeling good <sighs> for those interested in the numbers my FTP came out at 300 my five minute was 384 my anaerobic capacity was 462 and my five second was 781 watts yep that's over one horsepower Mm. Um, now, my FTP and my five minute is lower than when I was at Peak Fitness earlier this year. But what is cool and probably a better comparison is that compared to the 4DP test I did this time last year, I'm higher on every single metric. My FTP was 288 this time last year and my five second power just 760. Yep, um, I mean, I'm not a sprinter. My results weren't too different, three watts better actually, but that's what we wanted from the plan. The plan's aim was to keep us mentally and physically refreshed, which I feel it has done. Usually in December I feel worn out and in need of a rest, but I actually feel ready to hit whatever's next. But where do we go from here? I spoke to one of the world's leading coaches, Neil Henderson, to find out. Thanks for coming on and giving us another chat, Neil. I just wanted to start with how important is it to have a transition period? What would happen if athletes didn't take that downtime and just trained really hard, just didn't have a, a down phase? And that how would that then affect them in the in oncoming season? Yeah, the transition serves a couple purposes, a little bit of it, a physical uh, kind of a reset, pulling back a little bit, letting your body rebuild and throughout the transition plans we've had that integration with some of the other movement with yoga and some strength training, mobility, getting things kind of in a good place so that you can go and, and turn things up from a physical sense. There's also the mental side of things where, you know, if you're just on it all the time, you can kind of run out of, of uh, that bit of motivation that you really need when the going gets tough and when you're doing that hardest level of training. So there's also a part that we're trying to pull back that mental strain. So the, the way I sometimes describe it too is kind of like driving a manual stick shift car. Um, to shift gears, you have to actually put in the clutch, get off the gas, shift gears, and then get back on it. The transition is pretty much that clutch where you put it in so you can shift gears. Sometimes you downshift to pull back a little bit, like and then other times we're going to upshift, which is probably what most people are getting ready to do to get into the new season. Yeah, I know this is definitely the best I've ever felt for December. I've had 
off seasons in the past where I've had com- two weeks completely off. I've got on the bike and I've felt terrible and regretted it instantly. So I feel like the transition plan is something that I kind of wish I had when I was an athlete. But one thing I did really like about the transition down plan was the variety of sessions. And one of the sessions was the yoga sessions. I haven't really done any yoga before. Is that something that I could carry on going forward in the future? Or is it just a winter thing, something that we do in the winter? Yeah, for most folks, adding in some yoga throughout the rest of their year, not just over this winter period, is really going to be helpful for them to to stay, uh, basically have it have the mobility and maintaining that body in a good structural sense as you go forward. In some cases, you also find that it uh, it does provide that little bit of a like slowing everything down, focusing on just what you're doing and letting like the rest of the world go away, where you know we don't always get a lot of opportunities for that we don't always take those opportunities and so that's another really uh, positive reason to keep that going throughout your season just like some of the strength training Uh, if you're you know if you're young in your 20s okay the strength becomes you know isn't as much of a limitation but if you're a rider who is in their 40s or 50s or 60s and beyond then that that importance of maintaining some strength training throughout the rest of the year is also important and yoga has a, a level of strength there it's not quite as intense but still can be quite beneficial for most folks without loading overloading you so now that we've finished the transition plans we finished the six weeks where do we go from the back of these plans yeah we often recommend between plans that you do take a little bit of a break often a week between one plan to the next and in that time period you know in some cases it's a complete week off especially if it's been like a longer 10 or 12 week plan that you've done with the transition plans they're a little bit shorter so what we would often say is do you know pick a couple sessions during that week in between just to just to keep a little bit of activity before then starting into your next plan the best thing right now might be a week or so here with the holiday to kind of pull back do just a little bit of maintenance one or two sessions and then go ahead and apply a a new plan starting uh, beginning of the year and have those next you know 10 12 weeks progressing building up that fitness and being ready for a great 2021 thanks neil we're gonna be on fire for 2021 yeah sure are let us know in the comments any challenges you'd like us uh, to do in 2021 and we'll make a video about it what you you got anything you want to do i have actually yeah so i'm gonna keep it a secret You have to wait and find out. I don't think you actually know. I don't. No, you don't know. Well, (laughs) I feel feel left out. It's okay, you'll find out. (laughs) Well, let us know how you get on uh, with the transition plan if you've been doing it yourself. And also, if you do a 4DP test, let us know how you get on with that as well, because they are absolutely savage. And uh, if you've enjoyed this, then please give it a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next one.